all know it's too cold. I'm just kidding. When has cold weather ever stopped me from making a video, huh? <laughs> it's Henry at Mowers and Flowers. Good afternoon. It is a cold one today. I think it's about 23 degrees. 23 is about, I mean, that's pretty cold for New York in the past decade or so, you know. I do remember back in the 80s and stuff where, you know, we would hit zero or below zero at some times, you know. But uh, that was a while back, you know, and we haven't hit like uh, the teens in quite a while, you know. At least here in Long Island we haven't. So today's pretty cold. I don't want to get my hopes up, but the weatherman says we might get a couple of inches on Tuesday. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to test a couple of my snow blowers if it does actually snow. And hopefully it'll be nice powdery snow because I have an electric snow blower I have to do a review on. I've actually done the entire review, I just haven't never tested it yet because I have no snow to test, you know? Anyway, uh, today, we're going to be working on this uh, Briggs Quantum Engine. It's a Craftsman 20-inch uh, push mower. I got this push mower for free. It's right, free, from my new friend Robert Kramer uh, over in uh, Bohemia or Bellport or Belmore. One of those areas down south. Uh, wasn't too far away from my house. Anyway, he gave this to me for free along with a 12-horsepower uh, Briggs tractor engine um, flathead, which is always useful, right? And uh, some other stuff. But uh, I figured I, I could bang this one out, hopefully, in this video. Uh, it came to me just like this. Wheels seem okay. Slightly wobbly, but, you know, with used equipment and these plastic wheels, where in the hub area cause it to not be as stiff. You know what I'm saying? So it wobbles a little bit. But essentially, it's a pretty decent uh, push mower. I've had a lot of these, you know? So it comes with a bagger. The bagger's in good shape. And uh, my friend Charles Cribbs wanted the other bagger. But I told him, that it's not in very good shape. See there's rubs here and a rip. So this isn't worth spending money on shipping, you know, because this thing would probably cost $20 just to ship, you know? Because of the size of it, you know? Not that it's that heavy, but it's the size, you know? Anyway, it's missing the top um, engine cover. You know what I'm saying? If you look over here, whoever had this before just ripped the cover off without trying to take the uh, Phillips screws out of here, right? I won't be able to test this unless I get a bail handle cable. As you can see here, it's split in half. It's, it's like hanging on a couple of rusted wires here, you know? So this cable is Dunsky! This cable's Dunsky, but I think I might have a couple of cables that we can just put on here so we can at least engage the uh, the uh, kill brake handle mechanism for the flywheel. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to go find a uh, engine shroud because I know I have a couple of them. So I'm in my backyard now. Let's see if I can find that. Gee, the wind has shifted my my shed closer to the bushes. <laughs> Look at that. It's exactly what I need. Um, however, I think that little black part, the long triangle part that covers the top of the um, air cleaner and the linkage, I need that. That I don't have. But I do have a couple of these. Uh, this is in worse condition than this one, so maybe I should just try this one. Pretty sure I don't have another one like this. That's about it. Well, better than nothing, I guess. Now the cable. See what I'm saying? This black 
triangular part that goes right over here that I don't have. But it'll be good for now. I have a used bail handle cable brake kill switch flywheel mechanism and uh, let's see if it uh, moves yep good see pull it and it's smooth so let's see the length boom and boom this is gonna work so I just saw my neighbor from across the street Andy the Brit as you know, his kid went and hung out with his friends without masks on, as his dad and mom has been telling him not to do. He goes and does it anyway. As a result, every single one of those kids that he was hanging with, like six or seven of them, got COVID, took it home, infected their entire families, right? Of which half of them, some of the parents were not in the best of shape and are in the hospital. So once the dad recovered, one of the uh, worse off dads recovered in the hospital, he was in the hospital for five days, and uh, he says, he's so pissed at his kid, he says, here's the hospital copay of $5,000. You are gonna pay for it. So uh, Andy always boasted on how he's such a healthy guy, and even if he got it, he wouldn't even feel it. Today, he told me that he was in bed for a week and it was like the flu on steroids. And at one point he was afraid he was gonna die because he was gasping for air. So that's how strong this um, flu is, this COVID-19. And he told me, Henry, it's just a matter of time before you get it, baby. And I'm like, well, it has been about a year and I don't have it, you know? Nobody in my family has it. And my uh, daughter stopped going to school because there were 30 or so cases in the past week. So she's like, hell no, I'm not going. So she's all 100% from remote. So as long as we stay home and don't go out congregating with people, you know, without masks, I hope I don't get it, but it's not something you wanna get. You gotta be super healthy if you wanna get through it, if you got it, you know? Anyway, that's just my take on uh, masks and not being careful, you know what I mean? I'm gonna put this on now. So I'm at the base here. I'm gonna push this like that. Push in this clip here. That part's in like that. Oh my God, it's so cold. Pushing that one, then pushing this one. It would normally be easier if it wasn't so cold, honestly. My fingers, I could barely move. There we go. Uh, take out the Z-bend like that. Then you lead up to this part over here. And this just clamps on there. Comes out like this. Bail handle. Move the Z-Bend and untangle this silly thing here. This is not stock. This is somebody putting it on. So I'm going to remove this one. Okay, now I'm going to install the new one. Z-Bend inside the hole here.
Pulls other ends so that it's not that much slack. bend into this bail handle and the uh, inner plastic stud goes through the hole. And there we go. So now my cable is done. Let's see if that works. There you go. Maybe it needs a little bit of uh, lubrication right around here because that's where you hear the noise. And this cable is a little longer than you want it to be. But it'll be alright. I'll just uh, zip tie it like over here or something. There we go. Looks good. Feels okay. Has no gas in it, of course. Let's check the gas. I'm not going to put gas in it just yet. What I'm going to do is just take the air filter cleaner cover off, take the air filter out, and shoot some uh, carb spray into the mouth of the uh, carburetor just to see if it will turn over. As you can see from over here, while the wheel is slightly wobbly, not bad at all, it looks a little towed out a bit. So I need to use some channel locks and just bend that a little bit just to straighten it out. So I bent the two wheels in with these channel locks. Much better. Just take some carb spray, shove it in here a little bit. I'm actually spraying the holes. Now this is a primer. And it's so cold, it's frozen. Nothing's coming out. It's cold. Okay, I'm gonna engage it, see if it turns over. Right, nice. So maybe if we just put some gas, it might work, because it turns over, you know? Put some gas in here. Crap, I put too much gas in there. I'm gonna end up draining this stuff anyway, you know what I mean? So anyway, let's see if it primes. Feels like it has good suction with the air, but I don't see any uh, fuel coming out. You know, you can hear the air, but I have a feeling I might have to do a car clean. I'm going to have to take the carburetor off. So I've clamped off the fuel. Three, five, sixteen. I 
takes this cover off. Breather over there. It's actually, it has good suction because these, the part over here has not been pushed in, which is good. Now we're going to take this uh, fuel line off and two three-eighths over here. Taking the hose clamp off the fuel line. Trying to remove the fuel line off the carburetor. It's pretty stiff. I'm going to try to do it without breaking it. Two three-eighths bolts take off the carburetor off of the engine block. These Briggs Quantums are one of the easiest carburetors to work on. And take the uh, off the Z-Bend. There's a carburetor right there. We'll loosen up this bowl and check out what's underneath. Because the Briggs Quantum carburetor has the uh, jet nut inset in the bowl, how there's a huge depression here, sometimes you can't get a wrench in there. So you want to use a um, half inch ratchet and you could feel some resistance, which means it's probably pretty dirty inside. Which is the reason why it's not getting fuel or the primer doesn't really work. Even though I feel like the primer would work if it was cleaned. So here's a jet bowl nut and it's clear. Let's check out the condition of the bowl, what's inside. There we go. So it doesn't look like it's eh, there maybe a little bit of water in there. There's like an area where see the orange part? It's like a bubble. That's water. And then you could see there's a lot of stuff in there. Debris. I think there's a rubber piece in there. So that's what's clogging the emulsion tube. So I'm going to clean out this bowl. We're going to get a new can of carb spray because that other one was frozen. And we're going to blow um, carb spray up that hole in the middle there. That's the emulsion tube. I guess everything else looks okay. This gasket looks like it might be on its way out, but we'll try it before we do anything. Also, we're going to blow uh, air, uh, not air, carb spray in that hole this hole that ought to do it Okay, so I cleaned the carburetor, the bowl, the uh, bowl nut, shot up uh, uh, carb spray. Actually, I used uh, some a brand new can of uh, contact cleaner from my friends over at Lucas Oil Products. Up the emulsion tube, primer hole, Welsh plug hole, uh, the joints around it, the butterfly flap where the joints are could have some varnish so it, it's easier for the butterfly flap to move. Put it back on the linkage again. You can adjust the RPMs by moving this tab in and out to tighten or loosen the spring over here, which has the which is the return to the governor linkage. And I just tested the primer. 
and it shoots it now shoots a little bit of gas up the emulsion tube. So it's priming. Let's give her a try. Honestly, it doesn't really feel very good. Let's try priming it some more. Make sure it's fine. And it is. I see fuel shooting up. Pretty well, too. RPM is very high. I'm gonna get a clamp here, clamp down the uh, bail handle. shut it off anyway. So this tab is too um, pulled out too far so the tension for the spring is too much. So I'm gonna pull it in a little bit more, just a little bit. And that gives a little bit less tension on the spring. Yeah with these you know you gotta prime it every once in a while to start it again unless it built until it builds up proper heat. So it vibrates a little bit, which means the blade is probably uh, a little bit out of whack. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I'm gonna take care of that uh, when, as the spring, uh, you know, gets closer 
because obviously I'm not gonna use this or sell this anytime soon. I just wanna get it ready so that when spring comes and I'm ready to sell lawnmowers again, I can tune all, everything up then. Uh, I'm gonna remove these two tabs then. See, I don't know why the person who had this before didn't just use a screwdriver to take it off instead of yanking it off, you know? It, it wasn't stripped or anything. And it's very easy to move. I guess the person just didn't have a uh, screwdriver <laughs> at the time. Crazy, right? And we'll remove those two things here and we'll put on the new shroud. Alright. Well, it looks like I have to route this pull rope through this hole. It means I have to uh, bend this one out a little bit so I can get the rope out. Rope was out, put the handle through this thing here, and put it back. Like I said, I'm still missing this part over here anyway, you know. This is not exactly ready to sell 100%, you know. But I wanted to see if this uh, lawnmower works, you know. And all it needed was a carb clean, a new uh, bail handle cable to kill. We're going to need this eventually if you want to make it, you know, absolutely perfect. The um, air cleaner is not in terrible shape. But like I said, when we get to the time where we're going to start really selling uh, lawn mowers we'll get that all straightened out so right now this engine runs starts vibrates a little bit but not terribly bad bent the uh, toe out of the front wheels here and this lawn mower just needs a little bit of a wash you know with some super clean or something clean it out and uh, get those blades ready but uh, everything seems like it's uh, pretty good you know free lawnmower and it only took a little bit just to get her going and that oil change i think you might need an oil change because this earl is terrible or like they say in uh montreal terrible look at that earl it's black death and it's in the uh low area i hate doing oil changes but this does need one uh, i'm gonna put a sticker on here that says needs oil change so that I'll know uh, to do one. I'm gonna dump the fuel back out of here because I don't want this much fuel left in here all this time, you know? So there we go. Uh, I've got a little note here on this bell handle. It says it needs an oil change and I've got blades that vibrate, needs attention. So then when I get to this in the spring, I'll know exactly what to do. I'm gonna tighten up these handles a little bit because it looks like this one over here needs a, uh, a true um, wing nut to tighten this uh, handle together. Other than that, you know, the bag is in excellent condition. The wheels are, um, the tread is very good. And uh, it's in decent shape, you know what I mean? I uh, Maybe I'll get $125 in the spring for it. I'll tune up the throttle a little bit more, do an oil change. Check out the blades, but uh, that'll give me plenty of time to do it before spring. So, uh, shout out to uh, Ronald Marmerstein for donating $5 to the channel, as well as Cat from Hamburg, New Jersey for buying one of my new stickers. Uh, I really appreciate the support. Thank you very much. Also, we have a... Mailbag. Got this in the mail yesterday. I went to uh, my buddy Andy from Jericho's house for the evening. It's his wife's birthday, so we went to have dinner. Um, this is a gift that I got from my friend Robert Smida over in Fort Plain, New York. He saw He's a regular follower on my channel, buys a lot of stickers, very good support, appreciate it. 
Uh, this is a lawn and garden, no mess, oil change, flexible draining tool. You guys know that whenever I'm doing oil changes on my uh, lawn tractors, right, I'm always trying to fabricate some kind of a little funnel, if you will, so that once you take that drain plug out, right, if it's not sticking all the way out, it's just one little bolt in the engine block, it's just going to trickle and dribble all over the place. It's always a mess. I always make a mess when I'm trying to do an oil change on a lawn tractor if it doesn't have a nice, you know, straight out pipe that, that you can do it. So this one here is a flexible rubber thing. Look at that, huh? And so basically you could put it right there and it'll just drain right out. And hopefully you won't have a, as much of a mess as you normally do from uh, doing oil changes. So this is a, I, I honestly, I've never seen anything like this before. Look at that. It's like there's a super thin metal on the inside and it's rubber coated. It could be just a rubber coated piece of metal. You know what I mean? Very flexible. So you can, you know, shape whatever you want you know even if you have like some crevices here look you can shape it like this <laughs> around like a pipe or something look at that it's very cool i've never seen this before this is very cool thank you very much robert for sending me this gift i will definitely use this uh for a future oil change on my lawn tractor this is very helpful thank you very much looks like it's easy to clean too just wipe it you know what i mean uh, this is made by Forma Funnel. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Look at that. Forma Funnel, flexible draining tool. Yeah, it's nifty, man. Very nifty. Very cool. Thank you very much, Robert. Appreciate your support of the channel, man. Of course, I couldn't stand it. I had a wing nut sitting right over there. I figured I'd just fix it, you know? One less thing for me to do later on, you know? But anyway, that's my fix for today. Getting this free Craftsman 20 inch push mower running again. Needs a little bit more attention as spring nears, but we've got most of the important stuff taken care of. Looks like it's gonna be a good $100 bill sometime in the spring. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Here at Mowers and Blowers, we push them into the garage, but they come out driving. See you next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.